we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Happy New Month. It is our prayer that the Lord God Almighty will bless us as we journey through this month and as we continue in the faith in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Last week we last week we talked about how far God goes in securing us. To what length does he go in securing us? And today we want to consider the same topic but we want to look at another aspect of it altogether. We want to look at the aspect of God's mercy and passion. How far God goes to secure our souls. We've been following the series for about a month now and I encourage you to listen to the previous messages in case you've not done so. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for all your goodness, your mercy and your grace. We appreciate you, mighty God. Thank you for always being there for us. Receive all praise and glory. Receive all thanks. Dominion and power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God, we ask that you speak to us. Even this moment, help us to know how much effort you put into saving us and not just saving us in securing us from falling from the faith jesus christ said of all that you gave to him no one was missing he did not lose anyone except the son of perdition lord may we not be missing too let us all make it into the kingdom. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Speak to our hearts. Energize us. Help us to follow to the end. In Jesus name. Amen. Before we move into the message, kindly like and comment. If you have not subscribed to this channel, Osana E. E. David, please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to share this video with someone. Share this video and also recommend this ministry to other people. God bless you. If you are among those who feel very bad when you pass through diverse temptations and when you see the level of atrocities that are, become, that are being committed in the world today, if you are among those who feel very bad and you feel a little bit discouraged, Thinking about the responsibility of God in the world, if God is actually still responsible for the affairs of this world, if he cares, if he still takes care of men, if he is still in charge of this planet, if you are among those who feel worried, and not just that too, who still feel worried if God is going to save their souls, this message is for you and I encourage you to listen to the previous messages that we've talked about. Uh, the security of the believer's soul. So let's look at the test for today. Psalm 103, 7-18. It's a little bit long. We have two passages for the test of today. Psalm 103, 7 to 18. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. 
As far as the east is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. Praise God. Verse 14. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for men, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to them that remember his commandments to do them. Praise God. So if you look at the test for today, remember we're talking about how far God goes to protect us, to protect our souls. And today we're focusing on God's mercy and passion. If you look at the, the writing of the psalmist, it's talking about God's mercy. How gracious God is, that he is slow to anger and is plenteous in mercy. God does not reward us according to what our sins deserve, but he is always merciful. One of the ways God protects our souls is by showing us mercy. If you look at the Old Testament, there were laws that demanded instant retribution, instant repercussion. And some of those repercussions were being stoned to death, being killed immediately. But in the New Testament, there is no sin that warrants the penalty of instant death or physical death because it is the blood of Jesus Christ that speaks for us. We are operating under a new covenant. It is not like the covenant of the Old Testament, which was faulty and had to be done away with. But in this new covenant, we have abundance of mercy. Jesus Christ is our high priest. He goes, he, he went into the Holy of Holies once and for all. And as a high priest, he is both the priest and also the victim, the lamb. For the sacrifice so he offered himself and he is also a intercessor as a high priest he intercedes for us so and he is also our judge so the same one who is able to forgive as the same one who paid the price for our redemption and he did not just pay the price he is the executor of the sacrifice of the covenant he instituted the covenant and not just that he told us behold i am with you always even to the end of age he is with us and he chose us mercy forgives our sins the passion of god is so deep is so great that he doesn't deal with us according as our sins demand but he shows us mercy at even our weakest moments 
we are dust. And he remembers that we are frail. We are frail. We are like the grass of the field. Look at verse 13. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. God pities us. 14. For he knoweth our frame. He remember it. That we are dust. We are just dust with the breath of God in us. So he knows what we are made of. And he is merciful to us. The mercy of God does not fail. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. And this mercy goes to length to save us. It is a mercy of God that says no and brought us home. Look at Isaiah chapter 49 verse 16. Behold, I have engraven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy words are continually before me. This is the passion of God. He engraved us on the palm of his hands. To engrave is, is to dig. Is to dig, is to make incision. Uh, for instance, when you look at most epitaphs, a lot of epitaphs, that means the writers they put in graves on the marbles or on the cement work of graves, they engrave them, they dig them inside. So God is saying that we are so secure that we are engraven. The security is, is as strong as being engraven on the palms of God's hands. So who is going to snatch us away from him? Nobody. Our souls are secured before him. Let us just follow and obey. Nobody is going to snatch you away from the hand of God. Jesus Christ said he is the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So if Jesus was to be here physically, instead of anything to snatch you away, he comes, fights off the danger, and makes sure that you are safe. But this time around, he's not here physically with us. And the soul is not as physical. So Jesus Christ is with us in the spirit through his spirit through the holy ghost lives inside of us through the spirit of god and our souls are saved except you are a hypocrite going to church and just deceiving yourself if you look very deeply you will see that the power of God is real. You can feel him that, yes, I'm secured, I'm saved. But a lot of times, a lot of times, devil throw arguments into our hearts, throw doubts into our hearts to try to confuse us, to try to ask us, are you sure you're saved? Are you sure the Lord is going to save you on the last day? Yes, we are saved. Examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith. If you are in the faith, your, the Spirit of God will be a witness with your spirit that you are saved. Amen. Let's look at this parable of Jesus Christ. The parable of the prodigal son. Luke 15, 20-24. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion and ran 
and fell on his neck and kissed him. Let me ask a question. How did the father see him when he was a way off? If he wasn't anticipating to see him. Even though this son, younger son, assumed that the father was dead, took away half of his properties, probably sold the landed properties, sold the trees, the economic trees, sold the things he couldn't move, and then went away with the cash, lavished everything, squandered everything, and was coming back. The Bible says the father saw him when he was away, far away off. The father saw him. And he had compassion for his God. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him even before the son said anything. This is how far God goes in securing our souls. This is the length God goes. When we go astray, God anticipates our coming back home. God expects our homecoming. It was the father that ran to him. In fact, it was the father that reconciled himself to the son. Not the son coming to beg and ask for people, elders in the community to come and uh, make peace with the dad and beg him to accept him. Remember the original plan of the son. The original plan is, okay, I'm going to meet him and tell him, I've sinned against you, I've sinned against God, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against my elder, my elder brother. Please, can you accept me as one of your servants? I want to serve. I just want to serve. But before he could open his mouth, the father reconciled with him. A lot of times when we do things and we are ashamed to go to God, God's hands are already stretched. My son, can you just please come back to me? I'm willing, I know, I know I'm a holy God. Look at the blood of Jesus. Everything has been paid for. If you don't come out, you can't come to me. Leave that mud. Leave that sin and just come. I will wash you. I'm ready to forgive you. Yes. God's mercy is so huge. Let's continue with the passage. And the son, verse 21. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against you, and in thy sight I have sinned against heaven. 21. And the son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But, I, but the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his head. And choose on his feet, and bring it on the father calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For thy son was dead, and is alive again, and he was lost. For this my son was dead, and is alive again, he was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. Look at it, the father didn't even say anything to him. He kissed him. The son said, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy. He didn't say, Well, I've forgiven you. Action speaks louder than voice. Action speaks, the, his actions speak so loud. Let's marry, let's play music. Yeah. Because right in his heart, the forgiveness had been there. He knew the son had gone astray. This is what happens. Let me tell you, it is only sin 
that can take us from the love of God. It is only sin. Do you know that Jesus Christ is going to pay some people in tears? Yes. He's going to reward some people in tears. Some of those who served him, who worked for him, but never repented. They never bring bring forth the fruit of repentance. They gave offering, they do everything, but never repented. Maybe never, never repented of witchcraft, maybe never repented of their secret societies. And then he will tell them, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. May that not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us know that God is not interested in our destruction. He is not interested in is not interested in us perishing forever. As a father pities his children, so he pities us and he protects us. We are the apple of his eyes. He makes sure that nothing evil comes to us, take us to snatch us away. Let's look at what Jesus Christ said in John chapter 10, 11 to 18. The Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, see the wolf coming, and leave the sheep, and flee it. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. It is the one that created us, the one that put part of himself in us before we became living souls. He is the one we offended. He is the one that came to die for us. The same one who started this work will finish it. Because everything to finish it is within his disposal. He is the all-powerful God. He will finish it. He is the good shepherd. The hireling, the one that is hired to take care of the sheep, sees the sheep and flees. This is one of the ways you know a true man of God. A true man of God, you see, his, his primary aim is the salvation of the souls of his members. A fake pastor, a fake prophet, his primary aim is the prosperity, physical prosperity of his members. The true man of God makes sure he scolds you, corrects you, encourages you when you are falling away. When you are falling from the faith, and you are bringing money, pushing money into the ministry. He is not interested in the money. He is interested in your salvation. The fake man of God. If you are falling away and you are bringing money. He has no business with the damnation of your soul. It's none of his business. And when it comes to protecting the sheep. He flees for his life. When members have issues, maybe they are coming out of the awkward and their lives are in danger, their help is very, very limited because they fear for their lives. I remember a number of people 
who try to who repent from the occult world. One of them was sleeping right in my house. He was sleeping in my house because he couldn't sleep in his own house. One of them, we had to make sure we rent an apartment for him and follow him up. It's dangerous. Another one had evil powers. He was so powerful. So powerful. He said when he was initiated, he grew to a point that he had to swallow some eggs. That he could pass through the wall. Hearing some things alone could make your heart to skip. But as a child of God who had been sent, following the footsteps of the good shepherd, a lot of times you forget about your life and you go for the sheep and pull the sheep from the mouth of the lion. Pull them from the fire. Have you ever wondered the extent firefighters go sometimes? You see the fire burning and people are screaming inside. You see them going in to bring out schools, to bring out people. Imagine the one who goes into the fire and the fire cannot consume him. Imagine your life being in the hand of the one that cannot die. <laughs> Praise God. Imagine an immortal God saving you. The fourth man in the fire. Let us put our trust in him. That the one who called us is able to save us. He is able to deliver us. He is able to set us free. Amen. Let's continue with the passage. Verse 14. John 10, 14 following. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. <laughs> and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall bear my, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Look at the extent Jesus Christ goes to secure our souls. He came. His mercy saved us. Look at the passion. Look at how deep the passion is. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane. He came out and said, I am the one. Arrest me. Let these ones go. These disciples, let them go. Take me. I am your problem. I am the one you were here to seek. I am the one you were here to arrest. But these ones, let them go. Don't arrest them. He laid down his life. Should that be very possible for him to vanish? Should that be very possible for him to walk through the crowd? And nobody will touch him. It would have been possible for him not to reveal himself. I know Judas kissed him. But it would have been possible. 
Jesus Christ tasted death for the salvation of your soul so that you will not die a second time. How ready are you to make the best use of this great gift? What shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation? No. Shall persecution? No. Nothing. But you are a rational being. Imagine the great price Jesus Christ paid for us. Are you aware that hell has a large its mouth? Hell has enlarged itself to receive more souls because of unbelief, because of sin, because of the hardness of the heart of man. Are you making use of this great opportunity that Jesus Christ has given to us to be saved? Are you allowing sin to snatch you away from him? Everybody can resolve that I want to be saved or I don't want to be saved. There is this pastor who said he, he, he made up his mind. He said, I don't want to be a pastor anymore. I don't believe in God anymore. I have this video. I want to I actually message him, he refused to listen to the message. He refused to respond to my message. I will drop the comment. No response. So, I want to do a video. That is his choice. It's his choice. I have light here. But I can choose to remain in darkness. I can turn off all these lights. Jesus is the light of the world. You can choose to turn the light off and live in darkness. For those of us who are already in the faith, let us stay away from sin. Let us stay away from every secret and open sin so that we will be truly saved on the last day. Let's read this passage, Ephesians 5, 5 to 8. For this ye know, that no homonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be near. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Let us let the work of darkness go. Let's not partake in the work of darkness. God's mercy is more than enough to save us. God is passionate. To make sure that we enter the kingdom. Let's not become obstacles to his work. We have independent will. We can make choices. God said, Behold, I said before you life and death. But I advise you to choose life that you may live. We can choose death. We can choose life. Those of you who are already saved, let sin go. We have been delivered from the power of sin. Let us let it go. What is that particular thing that is still in your life that you need to let go? It could be a dubious job. It could be lying. It could be adultery, fornication. What is that particular thing? Your soul is already secured. Your soul is already in the hands of God. That means if you are genuinely 
if you have genuinely repented and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All you need to do now is follow. Let us pray. Lord, just like the prodigal son, that is how you searched for us. Why we were far away off, you ran towards us and you saved us. Help us, Lord, to live in accordance with your will and obey the law of Christ. Secure our souls to the end. Those of us who have believed, Lord, secure us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Secure our souls, O God. Secure us, O Father. Secure us, O mighty God. Secure us, mighty Savior. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arise, O mighty God, and strengthen these ones that have come to believe in you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the power of the Lord strengthen you. May the grace of the Lord be for you. May the power of God be for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Find grace. Find help in the time of need. Pray for you that everything you need in this world will be made available to you. May the Lord take you away from every trial that is capable of destroying your faith. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever situation you find yourself right now, may the Lord help you through it. I pray for the healing of your body. I pray for the healing of your soul. Pray for the healing of your spirit. Pray for the healing of your finances, your marriage, your relationships. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you who have been supporting our ministries, may the Lord God Almighty help you. Those of you who have been supporting our charity organization, may the Lord God Almighty help you. May you never lack in the name of Jesus. May you not spend your money on medical problems. May you not spend your money settling the courts. The law courts paying fines. May you not spend your money on sickness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord God Almighty secure your finances. Thank you, Lord God, for us in our prayer. I pray for as many that are sick. May the Lord God Almighty heal you. It is well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. Please subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E. Devi. Don't forget to share this video, like and comment. And please recommend this ministry to other people. I want to be doing daily devotionals on the narrow ways Christ for all nations. Please subscribe to that channel. The link is in the description box. Narrow is Christ for all nations at TNWCFEN. That is the URL, the, the YouTube link at TNWCFEN. The Narrow is Christ for all nations. Please subscribe to that channel. And also, if you want to be added to a WhatsApp group, uh, message me. I'm going to add you to a WhatsApp group where you can get audio, uh, mp3 of this devotional. May the Lord God Almighty bless you richly in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please, those of you who have been supporting us, continue to support us. We encourage you to support us. Those of you who have not been supporting us, please support our ministry and also support our charity organization, Hosanna David Foundation. See you next time. Bye-bye. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. 
God bless you.